Welcome to this Unity package that is called the Battleship Game 3D, in which you will be able to generate a game of battleships between two players. So the first thing it will appear in the game is the positioning of the player one votes, which are achieved by clicking once, and then you are able to rotate it by uh, pointing into the four directions of the boat. Whenever it gets on on another boat, it will change the position again, and uh, it won't allow uh, overlapping between different boats. So that's uh, managed by script too. And whenever you place all the five bolts of the first player, then uh, player two uh, starts placing its bolts um, in the following step. So I'm going to place them really fast, as you can see. And now it's turn of player one. So whenever player one starts, he's able to check how his boats are. And um, after that, he's able to move uh, his camera, rotating it to the left or to the right, as you can see here, and even making some zoom in and zoom out to check all the, the screen. So let's uh, reset the position to the one that was by default, that was this one here. And um, what he, uh, the aim of the game is to place uh, miss missiles into the enemy's uh, zone, that it will be this one here, or the player to zone. So, uh, as you can see, we can select one square by clicking on it, and then we can send a, a missile to that position. And, uh, as you can see, if the impact is uh, against the water, it, it will generate a blue square, like you can see here. So now it's the turn of player two. Player 2 is going to do the same thing, in the, and he's going to try to find where the enemy ships are. So as you can see, the missile is being launched, and now it hits the water. Okay, Let's just select um, where the ships are, so it will be easier for us to, to check where to um, send our missile. So as you can see, that we are sending the missile there now. And now it will hit one part of the of the ship. So whenever we hit one part of the ship, it will generate a red square with uh, the particle system that simulates the fire on the ship. Let's do the same thing for player uh, two. Let's shoot here in order to try to destroy one ship. And the process will repeat and repeat until the the player destroys completely the other ships. So let's just click here to show you what happens. And in the following step, we're going to shoot player one. And we're going to try to uh, destroy completely one ship. So you will see what happens in this case. If the ship is destroyed, as you can see here, in the next step, uh, it will appear in the in the enemies on the other player's um, canvas. So you can see how the ship is here. Now it appears and it's completely destroyed. And um, that will help the player know where to place its uh, following missiles. So let's check how this is achieved. The script, the main script, is uh, the game manager. The game manager is based on two parts, which is the placing the boats. This is, that is this first uh, code here. And what it does is um, it compares the position that has been clicked by the player um, with the position of the boat. And if the position of the boat interferes with another boat, it uh, says that it is not possible to place that, to place it in that position. So this this is more or less what it does, the script. And then we have the normal game mode, that is uh, the part in which the player starts shooting uh, its miss missiles to the enemy, and that is achieved 
thanks to um, another function that is inside the missile and the shooting scripts, which are being called by this uh, script, this main script. So, for example, if player we have player one. First, we enable the boats because when whenever player one is playing, uh, you have to see the boats of the player, and at the same time, we disable the boats of the enemy. That is this line here. Then, what we do is check if we have clicked on the square P2. The square P2 is the zone of the grid, as you can see here, that uh, contains but buttons. And inside each button, we have the grid square, number two, as you can see here, at the right. Let's now explain how the grids of the player one and the player two are created. So if you go to the grid player one, you will see that we have um, several colliders at the borders would be uh, that are the ones that are used to intersect the boat with uh, the exterior part of the grid in order to prevent uh, wrong situations. Then we have a canvas, and inside, inside the canvas we have the vertical lines, the horizontal lines that are these white uh, lines here, the letters which are these ones here, the numbers which are these ones here, and then we have the, the buttons. So inside the buttons, we have a button for each square, as you can see here. So we have 100 buttons, okay, which are those there. So whenever we hit on one of those buttons here, what we are doing is sending information to the main camera. So the main camera has a camera script, which has an objective, as you can see here, and says B18. So now we have an objective that is going to be the B18, and we are able to make, uh, to give some zoom, to increase the air dist, and to reduce it, as you can see here. Okay? So that's uh, how we get the zoom uh, working, and happens uh, similarly with the theta, with the rotation, as you can see here, and the phi. Okay? So whenever we click on a button, we, if we click on um, this one here, that will be the 86, this one here, you can see how in the, in the camera script it appears 80, 88 or 86 or whatever we, we click on. So that's how the camera script works. And um, if we go to the enemy line, you will see how a different square is created. So this is the one that um, we can find, as you can see here. Um, let me click on it. So it's going to be a bit difficult because we have a lot of things on top. OK, so it's this one here, as you can see. OK. So um, what it does, it, um, it, it moves one of the buttons and transforms it into that um, other button that has a different action on top. So that one is called the shooting. This one here, as you can see here, when I imported a separate file. So the shooting, that is this one here, has a shooting script with its reference to the missile, and then to two silos, and then it has a player variable. That is because whenever we click on it, okay, and we uh, let's rotate it as you can see, so you can see everything, how it's happening. Okay, so whenever we click here, it will instantiate a missile here and then it will uh, disappear in the, uh, in the water. So let's check how the missile, missile works. So the missile here has another script on it. That is the missile script, with, which needs an origin and a destination. And then it has a particle system on it, which simulates that fire uh, event. 
So uh, the origin and the um, destination um, are managed using a parabola. So in fact, the movement from one player to another player it's controlled by a parabola, a parabolic uh, movement. Let's repeat it so you can see it. This one here is a parabola. Okay. The next thing we can check is the um, the selector. The selector is just a script that is attached to each of the buttons. So if you go to the button uh, on the canvas, and this one's here, you will see that each of them has a selector. And then inside, um, we call the function selector on click and selector on enter. So these are the functions that are called, for example, in the enter one, Whenever the pointer enters the button, it calls this function here that goes to the game um, to the game manager script, and inside of that, it says the over object is going to be the game object. So thanks to that, we are able to select and place um, and place the bolts at the beginning, and then we are able also to to place the, uh, this arrow here and prepare the shooting event. Finally, in order to uh, just uh, finish with this tutorial, we're going to explain how the simple floating works. The simple floating is the, the animation or the, the movement of the ships, as you can see here. They move in a sinusoid to the right and to the left in function of some uh, variables that are set by script and in function of time. So that's all regarding this tutorial. I hope you like it. I hope you consider downloading it and uh, test it and creating new games for your, uh, your company. And um, I really appreciate some comments on the video if you are interested. Uh, and you can always write to us in order to get more information about the package. Thanks very much.